Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you are in good shape and eager to learn something new. So let's begin this video, which can be a destination for you all of you to learn something new. Okay, uh, guys, this is the session. This is the timetable of RBI Nabat and Sebi's live sessions, and this is our mobile application. If you want to download it, you can go to the Play Store and download. It. Okay, so the very first question that we have is. When was the Regional Cooperation Agreement on Combating Piracy and Armed Robbery against Ships in Asia enforced? So this is short form as RECAP. Okay, so when was this agreement enforced? It was enforced in 2006. Now, why is it in the news sudden? The reason is that India and Japan conducted their 2 plus 2 meeting. Then how are these two things connected? Wait for that. Let me tell you. So first of all, you need to know that India and Japan, both of these countries are collaborating on the RECAP forum and there are multiple forums on which India and Japan collaborate. So we are going to discuss about them a bit later. First, I want to tell you about this meeting because during the meeting, it was highlighted the platforms where India and Japan collaborate. So first, let's know about it. So the very first thing is the second edition of the 2 plus 2 meeting was held between India and Japan and 2 plus 2 meeting is basically the meeting of the two ministries from both the sides, defense and foreign from India and defense and foreign from Japan. Now this format of meeting is conducted by India with all the quad members. So Japan, US and Australia. So with all these three countries, India conducts this and with Russia, India has recently started to host this 2, point, uh, 2 plus 2 meeting. So I hope you will be able to remember these facts. One more thing that India and Japan are celebrating the, seven, the 70 years of their diplomatic relations in 2022. So this is guys a very important as well as a static fact. Okay, so do remember it's the 70th anniversary of India and Japan's relationship. Now one more thing that India and Japan have announced that they are going to conduct an Air Force exercise soon. Okay, however, the name has not been revealed by both of these countries. They have just announced their will to conduct the exercise. Now, what are the exercises that India and Japan currently conduct? First is Dharma Guardian, which is an army exercise. And we have Malabar and Jumex, Japan India Maritime Exercise, which took place very recently. And you are going to tell me the location of Jumex in 2022. Okay, so Jumex and Malabar. Malabar is a multilateral exercise between the quad members, and Jumex is the Navy exercise. In March 2022, Japan also participated in the Milan 2022 exercise. So Milan is the multilateral exercise conducted by the Indian Navy. Okay. So that is also a very important initiative or we can say collaboration between India and Japan. And the theme of Milan 2022 was camaraderie, cohesion and collaboration. So that is all about the military exercises. Now let's discuss a more important thing. The next thing is the collaboration of India and Japan on multiple forums. First is what we have read it, Asian plus six. So Asian countries, I hope all of you are aware of the Southeast Asian nations. Uh, which constitute this Asian grouping. Now you are going to tell me the name of those countries. China, India, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. These are the plus six countries which collaborate with Asian countries to make the economy of Asia continent very resilient. So that is the basic idea. Now what Asian and supply chain resilience initiative? This initiative was launched by India, you, uh, India, Japan and Australia. These three countries have collaborated to launch this initiative so that the disruption that the world faced due to the COVID and the China's supply chain uh, breakdown, such kind of disruption would not be faced by the world in the near future or in the distant future as well. This initiative was launched. However, nothing concrete about this initiative has come in the news. It is just that the will or you can say an informal kind of partnership is there between India, Japan and Australia regarding this supply chain resilient initiative. Now, all of these three you must have heard somewhere sometime. Okay. Now, this is a new initiative which was there in the news. So, let's know about it. So, this recaps full form is regional cooperation agreement. 
so it is an agreement on combating piracy and armed robbery against ships in asia okay 2006 is the year in which this agreement was enforced and in this year only the security uh, corporate the security council of this agreement was also established in singapore i will discuss that but let's know the members so as of now currently at present this agreement has 21 countries so information sharing center of this recap is located in singapore and it was established in 2006 and the purpose i have already told now guys these are the countries which are the members of recap and i have asked you a question about the southeast asian nations or the asian members so these are the asian members and now you are going to tell me the name of these countries okay this is also a part okay next question is where will the world's largest museum on harappan culture be set up so here guys um rakhi giri is the right answer all of these are the harappan sites only and rakhi giri is the place where this world's largest museum on harappan uh, culture will be set up okay so it is in hisar district in haryana rakhi giri is one of the biggest harappan civilization sites and here this will be set up now regarding this harappan site i want to tell you this fact that the indus valley civilization was a triangular civilization as you can see in this picture also which i have created for all of you so these are the very top most corners to which the extent to which the ibc was spread so the north most corner is manda jammu kashmir the eastern most is alamgirpur up the west the south most is dhamabad maharashtra and sukta gandor the west most part of the indus valley civilization so that is the very basic general awareness for all of you to remember moving ahead to the next question how many multimodal logistic hubs will are being developed in india so here the right answer is 35 i hope all of you must have heard about the national logistics policy which prime minister has recently launched or even say announced so the policy aims to reduce the logistic cost in india and we are talking about the logistic cost for uh, you can say for quite some time now okay now what is the purpose the objective is to reduce the logistic cost to 8% of gdp and currently it is 14 to 15% of gdp so it is a huge deduction that we are seeking through the national logistic policy okay apart from this this is the achievement that india has achieved so far the turn around time the average turn around time of the container vessels have come down from 44 hours to 26 hours not a very significant statement you can clearly skip this as well. but this target is very very important moving ahead again this is also very very important because here the here we are talking about the establishment the infrastructure that we have created so 40 air cargo terminals have been constructed 30 airports have been provided with the cold storage facilities and 35 multi model hubs are being developed in the country and all of this is going to uh, leverage india's infrastructure position as well as reduce the infrastructural cost the logistic cost basically that is the very basic idea and we are also planning to introduce the drone transportation which is really going to be a revolution if this comes into the sea but however it is just a planning as of now and you can clearly see that nothing is there related to the policy it's just the general statements that have come out and you just need to focus on the general statements only nobody is going to ask you about the details of this policy because right now you are not the policy maker and you are not going to be also you are going to be the manager in rbi or nabad or sebi so these are the regulatory bodies which do not require you to remember so much about the policies okay the national logistic policy is not very significant from your exam perspective so in my opinion these facts will suffice your preparation for phase 1 okay next question is which ship has conducted the first ever joint maritime exercise with nigerian navy patrol ships so again you can clearly see that it is the first time that india and nigeria have conducted a joint military exercise so which ship it is 
इट इज गाइस आईएनएस आईएनएस तरकश इट इज वेरी इजी न्यूज आईएनएस तरकश हैज कंडक्टेड दिस एक्सरसाइज इन द गल्फ ऑफ गिनी सो लेट मी शो यू द गल्फ ऑफ गिनी सो गाइस दिस इज द गल्फ ऑफ गिनी बाय द वे डू यू नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ गल्फ एंड अ बे If you know, then do mention it in the comment section. And if you don't know, then this is your homework. Do find it out and tell me in the comment section below because that's a very basic general awareness question. Okay. Now this is your Gulf of Guinea. Basically, this much is the Gulf of Guinea. So you need to know the countries which are sharing the borders with the Gulf of Guinea. Okay, or you can say the coastline uh, with the Gulf of Guinea. Okay, and this is Nigeria. So with Nigeria. India has conducted this exercise. Okay, with Morocco also, India has conducted the exercise in the month of July. Okay, so uh, INS Tarkash, when it was there doing the rounds in the Atlantic Ocean, then it conducted the exercise with Royal Morocco naval ship Hassan II in the Atlantic Ocean in the month of July. Moving on to the next question. okay a lengthy question so un international organization for migration has signed an mou with the confederation of indian industry for ensuring the safe migration of indian citizens the mou aims to create an opportunity for these two inter internationally reputed entities to collaborate on a range of initiatives related to the safe orderly and regular migration of indian skilled professionals and youth internationally when did, did the un iom come into existence so quite a simple question that has been asked from you but the language of the question was quite lengthy so here what is the right answer the right answer is option b 1951 this uh, un iom was established as an intergovernmental body okay so intergovernmental bodies are the bodies which uh run through the cooperation of different countries so i hope you have understood the basic purpose of this mou just to ensure the safe migration of the people from india uh to different countries okay and vice versa as we saw in the case of ukraine the people had to immigrate in india so that is also being considered here so that is the basic purpose however the focus is more on the safe orderly regular migration of indian skilled youth professionals uh, skilled professionals and youth internationally so that is the major focus okay now this iom was created in 1951 as the intergovernmental body within the un for uh, managing the uh, migration related affairs okay it has 174 member states uh, in over 100 countries you must have got confused here that how is it possible that 174 are the member states and 100 countries are there so the basic idea behind this is you must have heard about gujarat or maharashtra telangana or any state of india joining an international treaty so in that case that member state becomes a member of the uh, treaty and the country is also a member but suppose from india three states have joined the international organization so you would say three member states and one country that is india is a member of that uh, international organization so same is the case here the next question is with which organization has un environment program partnered to launch the first ever global marine tourism industry a uh, platform named green fins hub so here the reef world foundation is the right answer and it is very easy to guess as well because reef is something that we found in the oceans so it is basically a platform and green fins hub so what could be the basic purpose the basic purpose is to uh is to Uh, promote tourism in the oceans but that tourism should be sustainable in nature so this hub will help the operators to make simple cost effective changes to their daily practices by utilizing tried and tested solutions keep track of their annual improvements and communicate with the communities and customers okay so so that the environment can be protected and the entire tourism industry can be made sustainable The next question is Competition Commission of India 
has approved an investment of Rs. 665, sorry, 665 crore in Aditya Birla Health Insurance by the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority under the Green Channel Route. Which of the following statements is are correct about the Green Channel Route? So uh, here you can see the statements. If you want to read out the statements for more clarity, you can pause the video and read it. Now, as far as the answer of this question is concerned, the answer is option D. It provides deemed approval for the mergers between companies. Now, what is the meaning of that? I'll explain to you. But first, let me explain to you the news. The news is that the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority has announced to make an investment into the Aditya Birla Health Insurance. That uh, investment is worth of 665 crores. So that uh, basically that investment has got the approval from the CCI that there is no competition uh, malpractices that are happening in this merger therefore CCI has given its approval so that is the basic news okay now what is the green channel now green channel route is basically it is the process through which the mergers get the approval of CCI very easily so it is the deemed approval now, what is the meaning of deemed approval? Deemed approval is not like that we have given you the approval, but that approval is superficial. No, deemed approval means that we have given you the approval on a very quick basis. Okay, so that the procedural delays which used to be there can be eliminated and investment can be promoted. Because uh, we have seen that there is a lot of pendency within the government, within the judiciary system, within executive, within legislature. So a lot of pendency is there and we need to remove that if we want to succeed. So green channel route is basically a, a faster method through which a company gets approval from the CCI and they can merge. That is the basic idea. Okay, you can read it out as well. Green channel route is an automated approval scheme for the merger transactions. Okay, do remember it is for the merger transactions. This route provides a bypass from the regular legal proceedings to enable them for speedy settlements and quicker administrative decisions. Okay. Moving on to the next question, what type of malware SOVA is? So here guys, SOVA uh, is a Trojan. Now what SOVA is? Why is it in the news? Because this Sova Trojan malware has reached India. First of all, guys, it is the banking Trojan. So if it is installed in your system, then it is going to steal every kind of your banking uh, information, like your passwords, ID, everything. So you need to prevent yourself from downloading this Trojan. And how will you prevent yourself? You need to maintain or practice cyber hygiene. What is cyber hygiene? It is basically a new term that means uh, whenever you click on any link, just before clicking, focus on the link. Just know whether it is authenticated, whether this link has come from an authenticated site or is it a fake link, okay? Before clicking on any link, you need to focus on that. And this is, guys, the cyber hygiene. One more practice is there that you should stop going to the, uh, you can say to the unsafe websites, like your torrent website is unsafe for your system. The pawn websites are unsafe. Such websites uh, you all should avoid if you want to keep your systems safe and your data protected. Now coming back to this SOVA, so it is guys a Russian banking trojan. It means AUM in Russian language and it steals the malware. Oh, sorry, the data, the banking related credentials from your mobile or computer. Now here I have provided you the eight more most common types of malware attacks. First is your adware, where your system is attacked with unnecessary advertisements. Fileless malware. So this kind of malware directly attacks your softwares, Microsoft Office and these kinds of offices, uh, these kinds of softwares are attacked, not your files. So it is very difficult for you to understand that something wrong has happened with your computer until or unless something major happens, okay? Because this system works very covertly. It gets uh, you can say it gets hidden behind your system and you won't be able to detect whether the system has actually uh, detect affected the system okay then we have viruses we all know what virus is it affects the efficiency of the computer and it is transferable from one computer to another and then we have worm worm is also transferable like viruses now what is the functionality of worm it basically multiplies the files 
like the like an actual worm does what does it do it multiplies in numbers so worm virus or malware you can say also multiplies the files in numbers and this hampers the efficiency of the system then trojans which are downloaded through the links okay so be aware of the links that are sent to you through messages links that are sent to you e through you uh, through emails okay and the links on these websites the unsafe websites then we have the bots many websites use bot our website also use bot okay so there are certain kinds of bot that uh, perform a similar kind of function repeatedly so the basic idea of a bot is to perform an action repeatedly without any human interaction now if it is used for a good purpose then it is a good bot and if it is used for a malicious purpose then it is a malware ransomware now this is purely a malware that hijacks your system and until or unless you pay the ransom to the hijacker your data is not going to be safe in some cases the data is stolen even after payment of the ransom that is why it is named as ransomware okay because you have to pay the ransom to protect your data and it is deliberately done it is like your the hijacking of the computer however every kind of malware is done for that purpose malware very easy that is to steal the data now since it is meant for data stealing it is very hard to detect that your system has been infected with a spyware like the pegasus we had heard of it also so these were the eight common types of malicious malwares uh, that you can also in, uh, that your system can also get affected in your daily life so what you need to do to prevent your system your mobile from getting infected with these websites just think or be cautious before clicking on any link and don't go to the unsafe links download the antivirus in your system so that your system can be protected the next question is what is the requirement of turnover turnover for a small company as per the new definition so the small company's definition has been revised and now the turnover limit is 40 crores earlier it was 20 crore now it has been raised so that more and more company can come under the ages of small company okay now af after becoming a small company many companies are going to reap the benefits which are accrued for a small company now major companies are going to get the benefit so ministry of corporate affairs has revi uh, revised this definition now the paid up capital should be 4 crores which earlier was 2 crores and the turnover should be 40 crores so this is the news last question is who has been conferred with the knight of the legion of honor uh, award which is the france's top civilian order honor so here swati piramal is the right answer so she is the person who has won this award it is france's top civilian honor given in the field of business industry science med science medicine and uh, strengthening the indo france relationship so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it